going. G'day, I'm Mitch and welcome to Lounge Room Hobbies. I was going to come up with something witty to say but I think we'll just watch a rhino for a little bit and then we'll get to the video. Let's get straight into some armored wall rhinos. I've always loved these models and I distinctly remember the metal ones. Uh, and uh, not the <laughs> not the metal runners themselves when they were made in metal and there were these boxy chunky things that were just four legs bolted onto a rectangle is how they looked and I mean these are obviously immensely different and I just these are what brought me back to wanting to do a fantasy style army and doing Age of Sigma it, you know the I love the idea of this huge, monstrous metal cavalry. So the first thing that I, I the thing that I've been worried about because I've been looking at the, the photos on Games Workshop website and ones of people's models is whether there's like enough normal horns to make them look like actual rhinos rather than like this, this bladed horn. And I think, I mean, there's a section in the manual that seems to say that there is, I think there's enough that I can not do cleaver shaped horns, but I don't know. I mean, there's one. Two. Three. Maybe there's enough. So I'll start with this one because this piece seems to have come off the frame. Start by cutting off the body of the juggernaut itself. And just clean up the mold lines as I go. I just do this with a Stanley knife. So this is a fixed blade. As a present to myself from the last trip to the hardware store. Um, yes, I buy strange presents for myself. They include hobby knives and lumps of uh, insulation foam, but you know, we'll come to the insulation foam at another time. Let's take all the little nibs from trimming it off. There's no mold lines over the way there on the frame, so. Legs, rhino legs.
notice I've left a little nib on here. I need to pick off. I'm not going to do that until it's set nicely. But so the other part is working out whether I do the shield now and paint the model with the shield on. How painful is that going to be? I think I'll be alright. I'm sure I'll regret this later, but I'm going to put the shield arm on. Only because I'm really interested in just seeing a completed model. Cool. That's awesome. Introducing my hobby buddy, Dad. He's joined me in my new journey into an army and Age of Sigma. We'll see a bit more of him as we go along, mainly because I like going over, hanging out in his garage, talking Warhammer, lore, and my character could beat up your character, which just makes it an even more fun process. I'd strongly recommend a hobby buddy. It just makes everything easier, painting, building, there's someone there to pass the time with. But if you don't have one, I always find heading to a local game store or a games workshop is an easy way to find someone. You've got a shared language and a shared love of something, so it's as simple as striking up a conversation about what army someone has or what army you've got, and suddenly four hours later you're still talking about it. Convincing someone to join you in this hobby is probably a discussion for another time, so I'll leave it there for the moment. Bribery. The Rhino kit comes with two banners, both with a molded corn symbol on them, which makes it really great if you're just looking for something quick, easy and simple. Of course, I don't go for quick, easy or simple. I like making things hard for myself. So to create something different, I took a Dremel tool to one of the banners and started to slowly grind down the molded symbol. I'll go into this in more detail in the future when I talk about freehand painting banners, but I guess the important thing here to know is that this was pretty nerve wracking. At any moment, with slightly too much pressure, instead of having a nicely ground down symbol, I was going to have a banner with a hole in it and I was trying to avoid that at all costs. Here we are folks, completed model. Um, there's a few things that I've done while I was over at Dad's. Um, obviously we just started out our new armies together. So I thought I'd go through some of the, the, the little things on this. So this is the musician, Hornblower. Um, pretty much straight out of the box. So um, glued straight to the base, the horn arms, all of these, they're all just parts that come in the box, right? No extra special stuff. Um, all I've done since finishing them off, uh, maybe a good spot there, is that I've added in some liquid green stuff just to fill some gaps along the model, particularly around the bottom of the jaw. Maybe can't see it well on that one. This one's a good example. So around the, the horn uh, and around the tail, just where the two body halves go together. Um, fairly simple. I just added one of the skull spikes to the tip of this axe. And I've added a skull from the, the skulls kit to the top of the helmet. Uh, a little bit of chain again out of the juggernaut kit to um, just mark out the unit champion a little bit more. And that's it for these guys. Obviously I've left the banner off um, mainly because it takes up a lot on the side of the model once it's in place would be really painful to paint. I already think it's going to be painful to get underneath. So that's where I'm at with these. And obviously like I, I'm happy with these and I really like these, but I don't want to have the other three be carbon copies. And it'd be really, really easy for that to them to start looking the same. So we've got these three. And then I've got the next three in sub pieces. Banner. 
everything else. These are the pieces I know I have to use out of the kit. So the others have got uh, glued to simple bases, added some sand and some agrellon earth to get the cracking and some sections of cork for the big rocks. All right, these come off a sanding block. I bought two sanding blocks from, from Bunnings here in Australia for like two bucks. Um, in fact, it may have been more than two sanding blocks for two bucks. And you can just chunk them up like this and they're honestly really good value for the amount I use them. So these are glued down with PVA. Um, I had clamps on them because they just weren't really cold here at the moment, middle of winter. So they uh, took the time to cure and dry. And what I'm aiming to do with these is give some height to these juggernauts. So, you know, there might be one leaping off the top of the rock. Or there'll be menacing over the front and that kind of thing. And this one I wanted to slope upwards, which I'll probably do. So obviously that leaves me with the next step before I go customizing these a little bit more with different bits and trying them out is to get them onto the bases. That's what I'm gonna try and do. With the cork base, I need a secure way to attach the rhinos to them. Don't have the strong plastic on plastic bond that you get from the model to a plastic base. So that comes in with a new challenge. This corn army is intended as my main gaming army, which means that I need a strong bond and can't just get away with something like PVA glue or straight super glue. My solution was to use paper clips and create a hooked kind of pin that runs through the base, the piece of cork and into the rhino's feet itself. The trick with these is getting the position right. And that means taking a few steps before you actually glue them down. I drilled out the rhino's feet and inserted pieces of straight paper clip without gluing them. I then used this and positioned it over the cork and pushed down. When you lift the rhino off, the pin stays in place because the cork's caught it. If you pull this pin out, you've then got a small hole that you can use as a guide to drill through the piece of cork and through the base. I then use super glue to attach a hooked pin with a 90 degree bend underneath. This gives a really strong and long bond along the bottom and then a pin that can go into the rhino's feet. I use super glue mainly because it bonds the metal, plastic and cork together, but also flows into the cork, which is slightly absorbent. Using pliers, I break chunks off the cork. The blocks of cork start really angular and straight, a function of being a sanding block in the first place. Natural rocks don't tend to be straight, rectangular, or have smooth surfaces. So chunking the cork off with a pair of pliers lets me break up the shape. At the end of the day, I'm looking for something that doesn't have too many straight edges, and it might have overhangs, underhangs, or weird cracks. Don't toss the leftovers though, they're really useful as rocks, scatter, or just for building up anything else and filling in gaps at later stages. I use my leftovers here to add some extra rock detail on these bases, and I'll save the others for another time on some other models. With the cork in place, I used two types of sand to start building up some different detail. The first, river sand, is really coarse grained and works as a nice gravel substitute. And the other bonus, it's free. And on the other side I use a bricky sand, which is a much finer sand similar to beach sand. I'd use beach sand if I could have it because it'd be free, but I never remember to take a container with me. So in this case, I bought a five kilo bag for the grand total of about $10 Australian. I use the bricky sand as a more general cover. It fills in gaps, links the gravel to the cork, or just lays in patches that I otherwise don't feel like covering with anything else. In the last few gaps, and on the flat tops of the cork in places, I used a ghrelin earth, one of Games Workshop's cracking paints, to add another texture. The trick here is to apply it thickly, and to kind of constrain it. If you spread it all over, you just get cracks everywhere, which kind of 
detracts from the entire power of this texture paint. Time for a rummage in my bits. I've mentioned before that I've been collecting Warhammer and involved in the hobby for a very long time. Well, the magic of being a bit of a hobby butterfly like I have been in the past is that from all those previous projects, I've picked up a lot of spare different parts from different kits. To add some details, some little tweaks, and to make these models more mine, it was time to find some different bits to use. Digging through my bits boxes included my most ancient bits box. The Chaos Rhino box, previously painted brown in an attempt to make a hill. Don't ask me how I thought that worked. This is a magical place of strange bits that I'm not even sure where they came from anymore, but it's always rewarding to sift through. The unit champion was always going to be a bit different. I was feeling confident, so I figured I could mess around with some hopefully simple but effective conversions. I started with figuring out his body and arm position. This was done dry fitting, positioning it onto the model and working out where it might naturally fall to have the body twisted and the arm sitting. With the position fixed in my head, if not on the model, I applied a little glue to the torso and fixed it in place using the axe arm again to figure out where I needed that twist. Then I turned to the twin headed axe. It's a great piece, but it just wasn't doing it for me based on some of the things I've been staring at on the leftover frames of the Juggernaut kit. So I cut the leading edge off using a second cutting board just to create a little bit more of a flat surface. And then taking one of the cleaver shaped head crests that would normally go onto the rhinos, it took a little bit of filing on the ax shaft to make sure that the crest and the handle met perfectly. Then I end up with a really great huge front blade followed by a smaller blade behind that just screams corn and give me more skulls. I then came back to the unit champion and attached his two part now dried axe to his body. His axe arm in place this was quickly followed by his opposing shield arm positioned to try and counterbalance the movement across his torso so slightly forward and slightly outward. This is my favorite head that I've dug out of my bits box. It's a classic old Chaos Warrior extra. All that was left was to start adding heads to the other rhinos, finishing off the riders and adding some bits and pieces across them. So it was back over to the garage at Dad's. It's surprisingly hard to cover all the things that go into building a model. I'm certain I've missed things, but I think that's kind of the point. I love the building part of this hobby, digging through spare parts, looking for leftovers on the kit you've got, and wondering how I can use them. It's a process unique to me, and your process will be as unique to you as mine is. I just want to encourage you to experiment. You'll end up with a one-of-a-kind model, like my unit champion who just got featured in the glamour shot. I love his head. And I mean, that's a head that might not even be kicking around in your bits box, but you may find a piece that works for you. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking, subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to hit the bell down below so you get notified when I put up a new video. What's your favorite tweak you've applied to a model? Or alternatively, what's your favorite Rhino fact? Share it with me in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time on Lounge Room Hobbies. I think we're done. Yay!